In this video, we're going to have a look at how to solve equations with brackets. Solve x, example 1. Here you will see that we now have brackets in the equation. It is very important that you know that you cannot move terms from one side to the other if they are still inside a bracket. You first need to make sure that you get rid of those brackets and that you will do by simplifying. In the chapter algebraic expressions, we had an in-depth look at how to simplify brackets. Now we're going to use that knowledge to solve equations. So on the left hand side, I'm going to start by multiplying in the 5 to each term inside that bracket. 5 times x is 5x and 5 times minus 3 is minus 15. The same thing happens on the right hand side where the 2 needs to be multiplied with every term in the bracket and that will give me 2x plus 6. And now that the brackets have been removed, we can get the constant values on one side and the variables on the other side. I'm going to keep the 5x on the left hand side and the plus 2x on the right will be subtracted on the left hand side. On the right hand side, we already have the constant value 6 and the minus 15 on the left will be added on the right hand side. Simplifying both sides, I now have 3x is equal to 21. So my final step to solve x is to divide both sides by 3. And that means that the answer is x is 7. Remember that you can always test your answer for an equation. To test, you will take the left hand side and the right hand side of the equation as separate expressions and substitute x with the value that you determined. So on the left hand side, I will have 5 and in my bracket 7 minus 3. This will give me 5 times 4, so I have a value of 20. On the right hand side, I have 2 and in my bracket, once again, my 7 plus 3. And this means I have 2 times 10, which also gives me 20. And because the two values I got for the left and right hand side are the same, I know that my value for x is correct. In example 2, we once again have a bracket that we need to simplify before we can solve x. It is very important that you remember to always simplify each term on its own first. So in this case, I cannot add the 6 and the 3 together because the 6 is the first term and the 3 forms part of the second term with the bracket. This means that I first have to multiply the plus 3 into the bracket to make sure that I follow the correct order of calculations. So the 6 stays just like that and when I multiply the 3 in I will have 6x minus 9 and now my bracket is gone. This means I can now solve the equation by getting the variables on one side. So I'm going to keep the 6x on the left and then also subtract the 5x on the left. On the right hand side we already have the constant value 10 and now I want the 6 and the minus 9 that's on the left to also be moved to the right. So for that I'm going to do the inverse calculations of minus 6 and plus 9. And when I now simplify I have my answer of x is equal to 13. In example 3, we once again have a few brackets. On the left hand side, we have two binomials that we need to multiply. This means each term in the first bracket has to be multiplied with each term in the second bracket. This will give me x squared plus 4x minus 2x minus 8. On the right hand side, we also have a bracket and here the x in front needs to be multiplied in. x times x will give me x squared and x times 6 is plus 6x. Up to now we've worked with equations that only have x's in it and now we have x squared as well. But still I'm going to get all the variables on one side. On the left hand side I already have the x squared and I'm going to add up the like terms, and this will give me a simplified 2x. 
To take the x squared to the left, I'm going to subtract x squared there. And I'm also going to take the 6x to the left by subtracting 6x. And the only constant value that we have is the minus 8 on the left, which I will go and add on the right. Next, I can add up all the like terms. And I have 1x squared minus x squared, which will give me 0x squared. So now we're only left with the x's. And here we have minus 4x is equal to 8. So my final step would be to divide both sides by minus 4. And so x will be equal to minus 2. In a later video, we'll also have a look at what happens when the x squares do not add up to become 0 and still stay in the equation.